Tim Huckabee, and I am back in the series of sessions brought to you by the people at IS Sundries. We talked about doing eight different sessions, and today's going to be session number one. The topic is called the seven deadly sins of the floral industry. So in my introduction, I explained how I've been in the flower industry for over 25 years, and I've visited thousands of flower shops. I also speak at conventions regularly. I write for a couple different trade magazines. So I get to interact with florists all the time, and I'm in stores when I'm training. So when I'm there, I'm listening, I'm watching, I'm seeing what's going on, and I see repeated patterns. So what I've done is I've come up with a list of what I call the seven deadly sins of the floral industry. And these are common mistakes that, that shops make, and I want to point those, them out to you. You may be guilty of some of them, maybe all of them, I don't know, but by putting them on your radar, it's going to create a new sense of awareness in your store. A good topic for conversation with your team. Also, by putting them on your radar, I'm going to help you to, um, to come up with an antidote so you can stop these patterns because by eliminating these, it's going to put more money in your pocket. So here's my list. And they're not in any particular order. They're, they're random. But the, the first one of my deadly sins is profiling customers. And I see this all the time. And what, what I mean is, when a customer calls, when a customer comes in, we as salespeople are predetermining, oh, she's so old or he's so young and they're not gonna spend that and I'm not gonna offer that to him or her because of the way they're dressed or the postal code they're ca calling from or the type of car that they showed up, up in. Don't do that. It always, always, always comes back to prove itself wrong. The best way to approach dealing with the customer is sell to their needs, sell to what it is that they're celebrating Offer them what you think is appropriate, and if they don't want to spend it, they'll let you know. I've seen it happen, and I know in the early days of my career, I was guilty. I'd be working in a flower shop, and a teenage boy would come in and want to get flowers for his, uh, for his mother, and I would be thinking, oh, he's not going to spend a lot. He's only going to spend you know, 20 or 25 pounds. You know, lo and behold, he spent the summer cutting lawns and doing odd jobs, and he had 100 pounds burning a hole in his pocket to spend on his mom. So he proved me wrong. And that didn't happen too many times before I realized, put aside the age, put aside the gender, put aside some of the external trappings and deal with the issue, deal with what brought them into the store and sell to that. Second deadly sin is under, under utilizing your technology. And here in the UK, I would even take it a step further and saying some of you aren't using enough technology full stop. There are a number of point of sale systems that are available for, uh, for florists. I'm not gonna drop names, you know, who they are, you can research these online. But it, it is critical to use those. They make running your store much easier, much more convenient. Also, this far into the 21st century, you regularly have customers asking you, can you email me a copy of that order? And yes, you could do it separately on your store laptop or computer, but it'd be better if you were doing it on the fly in your point of sale system. In addition to gathering email addresses to do email blasts to them, and when you're using a point of sale system, it enables you to see what the customer's average spend is, so you know how to sell. It enables you to see where they sent you before, because customers are always saying, well, don't you have my auntie's address on file, or I sent to my, what did I send my daughter last time? So technology helps you to run your store more efficiently. Don't veer away from it. It's well into the 21st century. You shouldn't be running your flower shop out of a shoebox. Third deadly sin is worrying about the competition. And I know that that's human nature. You kind of wonder what everyone else is up to. And being curious is okay, but I see too often that we go off the deep end and we literally worry about what Tesco is selling a bunch of tulips for or what the flower shop down the road is selling for. Don't worry about that because that's all that's going to do is just give you wrinkles in your forehead. Worry instead about how you can do your job better, run your store better, offering higher price points, giving better service. That's more... Uh, productive use of your time to worry about the competition. Because the, the ugly part of that that I see happen too regularly is we get caught up in worrying about what's a shop down the street selling for, what's Tesco or Sainsbury selling for, I've got to match them. And before you know it, you're in this race to the bottom and then you're not making any money. So that's not never a healthy place to be. Sin number four, one near and dear to my heart, and not investing in staff education. I realize that there aren't lots of opportunities out there to get your team educated, but there are trade magazines, trade magazines here in the UK, as well as from the other side of the Atlantic. You can subscribe to some of the American ones. And along with IS, you're going to hear my company, Floral Strategies, offering you lots of opportunities to pay for it, invest in education in your staff. 
you probably will spend money to read design magazines, go to a design show. That's half of what you do. The other half is the business component. So think about investing in your team so they're, they have a better skill set, they're making bigger sales, they're offering better customer service. Sin number five is a big one, and that is not leveraging your expertise to sell better. Simply put, when customers ring your store or when customers come into your store, they're looking at you as the expert. They, they trust your opinion, they want your advice. Don't undermine that by asking them too many questions. Don't be afraid to offer a higher price point. Don't be afraid just to say full stop. As a florist, this is what I like to create, or this is what I'd recommend, or this is what I would suggest to you for this occasion or, or that occasion. And my proof positive of this is customers are constantly asking you, well, what do you recommend and what do you suggest? What they're saying is, as soon as I walk through that door and I see you wearing your apron, which by the way, you can get from IS, I see you wearing that apron, I know straight away that you're, that you're a florist, that you're the expert. They want your opinion. So you need to start leveraging that better. Ironically, it makes the sale easier. You end up making a bigger sale. Sin number six is being afraid to hear no. And I get this, you know, none of us like rejection, none of us are anxious to hear a customer say, no, I don't want to spend that. But here's my, my challenge for you. If a, no matter where you are in the country, it doesn't matter. You could be in the heart of London or you could be in a little rural town watching this video. No matter where you are in the country, if a customer were to come in and say, for example, he just found out that he's gonna become a dad, and you kind of ride that high with him and you give him a chance to spend 75 or 100 pounds. The worst thing he can say is no. And that's it. He might get a little pissy with you, but he's not going to go running, screaming from your store. He's not going to put down the phone. That is a myth that you've created. The floor industry has perpetuated this myth. So don't be afraid to hear no. When a customer says no, even when it is in a kind of acrimonious tone, what they're saying is, no, I don't want to spend that. No, I don't want that option. Give me another choice, show me a different design, take me to the pot plants, give me something that's a, that's a bit cheaper. But they're never going to buy higher if you don't offer it. And I'll wind it down by saying the seventh biggest deadly sin that I see happening is that we're not selling at current prices. I don't want to date this session by, by saying what year we're in, but what I see is that typically flower shops are pricing 20 years behind the rest of the world. And I'll give you an example. You have a customer who, on her way to your shop, stopped in Costa or Starbucks and spent a fiver on a cup of hot and dirty water, didn't think twice about it. She just spent 90 quid to fill her, I don't know, let's say 53,000 pound SUV. And she comes into your store clutching her 200 pound designer handbag, pushing her 150 pound designer sunglasses back in her, uh, in her hair. And if she tells you that she wants to send flowers to a girlfriend of hers who's having a birthday, give her the chance to spend that money. Give her the chance to spend 75 or 100 quid. The worst thing that she can say is no, but you can't buy it if you don't offer it. So listen to this again. Have this discussion with your team. Stop making these sins. See you soon.